between the client and the server or the uh, to the two peers it's a, a negotiation to stop to to agree on some uh, security parameters in my case here i will use the word keys uh, that enables the creation of secure connection uh, my example here is that if I want to, if a like a browser wants to access a HTTPS site, this negotiation will happen between keys to make sure that this is a secure connection. So the negotiation here, uh, as I said, a key negotiation, it's a, it results in agreeing on a secret keys. These secret keys are used to encrypt and decrypt the data that is happening in this connection. So the handshake uh, uh, and the key negotiation in the TLS is mainly used using two main algorithms, the RSA algorithm and the Diffie-Hellman algorithm. For the RSA algorithm, this is the architecture of it. It's, uh, it uses two types of uh, encryption, asymmetric encryption and symmetric encryption. For the asymmetric en encryption, let's say that the client here will be uh, a user a browser or whatever uh, this client generates a random uh, random key it's uh, it's called a pre master key and then uses the server's uh, public key to um, to encrypt it and send it to the server that's uh, how we uh, the, uh, the client saves or secure this random key that uh, to send to the server in the server they decrypt the uh, this key using the private key of the server this is the asymmetric uh, phase of the encryption for the symmetric then the client and the server they both generate what's called a master key from this pre master key uh, of course this master key depends on the private Remaster key, both the client and the server use this uh, master key that is generated to make the encryption and decryption between the two parts. And this is how the uh, secure data exchange uh, channel is established. Uh, of course, this has limitations. I will uh, mention them, but I will uh, explain the two methods. For the Diffie-Hellman, the Diffie-Hellman, this, um, uh, this master key, it doesn't uh, depend on any of the private keys of uh, like the server or the other user. None of them have the higher uh, ownership of the key, let's say. Uh, the client generates a different components, uh, a private and a public parameter. They are not keys yet, just uh, like a random uh, uh, parameters and send the public to the server. to the client and after this phase uh, a key is generated and this key both of the sides use this key to encrypt and decrypt the the data that has been Uh, the the data more after the uh, determination of the of the session i will explain it later the other protocol for the tls is the record protocol the record protocol is mainly uh, it uh, uh, dissect the transfer data uh, uh, encrypt it and uh, put it into packaging list uh, and which is called record in this uh, case uh, what does it do uh, it divides like it dissect and divides the outgoing messages and when uh, it gets a uh, Incoming messages, they, it, it applies the MAC to the outgoing messages and use this MAC to uh, verify the incoming messages, which this uh, by this we can assure the integrity of the data. This MAC can be added as a hash for the, for the records to make sure that the data hasn't been changed or something. Uh, uh, it uses the keys <coughs> that were established in the handshaking process to encrypt and uh, decrypt. <coughs> The protocol assures the privacy of the users uh, this is a uh, yeah <coughs> it's a feature that makes sure that any historical transaction that happened between 
uh, peer to peer or uh, client or server, after the termination of the session, this can't be uh, recalculated or, or uh, no one can get to these uh, records after the termination of the session. And also this uh, feature that if a hacker was able to hack the connection between uh, the peers or the client and server, this is as far as, uh, as the hacker can get. It can't, or uh, the, the hacker can't uh, uh, hack the data that is in this uh, connection. Like the hacker can hack the connection, but he can't know uh, or open the encryption of the data that is in the connection. The TA RSA, since the private, the uh, the server has the private key, this private key can be used to recalculate the keys that is used to and this, of course, uh, jeopardizes the confidentiality of the data and the privacy of the data. With the Defi Hellman, these codes, these uh, let's say components, as soon as the session is terminated, they will disappear. So they will not, uh, no, no keys will or no parameters will be uh, there to recalculate the, the keys and see uh, the data after the termination of the uh, of the session. But some browsers may see save these master keys, which is of course a violation of the. Uh, of the the essence of the different helmet and that's my presentation yeah right so if you say like all these encryption methods can be used uh in helmet and also RSA. RSA, yeah and uh, one thing to add is that it's either this or this of course yeah okay uh, one thing to add, like uh, why it was renamed to TLS, is because uh, the program was uh, was generated by one company, and TLS was like just updated itself, but uh, they renamed it because it was different company to just differentiate mm -hmm. others. So uh, what we learned is like uh, TLS is a protocol for peer-to-peer -peer communication. So you can use it for data exchange, and uh, it, it provides data integrity, as Lana said, and also <coughs> confidentiality. Uh, and it cannot be, uh, even the hacker catch, catches the data, it cannot take it, yeah? Yeah, so it, it, uh, it provides end-to-end -end encryption, which is uh, really good. Um, from use cases, uh, HTTPS, yeah, is mm -hmm. one of the uh, mm -hmm. uh, applications. Uh, other applications you Emails, uh, Email, yeah. instant messages. But yeah. the main uh, application is HTTPS. HTTPS. So it's the main focus. Uh, yeah. Uh, what, what it's used is current HTTPS, uh, which is quite widespread. We need here much storage. It's just establishing no. the yeah, and exactly. uh, also mentioned that the master keys can be stored or it could be deleted. Uh, Accessing the private key and stuff, I think it's it's a problem of other uh, other protocols also. I mean, if you have access to the private key, I mean, you can break everything. So yeah. that's uh, that's fine, I think. And um, also on the RSA, the the server can violate the trust of the user because it keeps the its own uh, uh, private key. So the server can have this information, uh, this extra information that the client doesn't need after the determination. This is the, uh, the server. So the variation can have just not just by the the hackers, but the server itself also. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Sorry, I was yeah. muted. It's a bit tricky here. Uh, so uh, Benjamin says, I think Git and other file transfer services uh, use it. Yeah, yeah, that's that's also good use case actually. Uh, if if it's like that. Um, the next we should discuss is um, who wants to? Yeah, 
Yeah, it's confusing actually. <laughs> So, uh, so who wants to go second? We have Didcom, Signal, WhatsApp. Uh, anyone? <laughs> you can do as Lama did, like just sharing the screen, maybe if you have a laptop. Or you can, uh, here, you can establish. Oh, okay. Why does it show this picture? No, I mean, no one is sharing anything. You know, I had this problem in my last meeting with the writers. I don't know that the, the, the camera is working. Okay. Or maybe it's because of recording, like it, it no, keeps. Because, uh, uh, it have an that oh, okay. But I thought that was when I was in quarantine, so I hope that was a big thing. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, for Teams, you have to do authorization and authentication every time. Yeah, I, I have something to say. So is everyone here actually? So we have Benjamin Depesh, Vesnik. Seems like, yeah, okay. Recording in progress. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Can you check now? So uh, the Wi-Fi connection isn't stable at campus. Sorry for that. We might experience it again. Uh, can you try again? Okay, I will, I will make you. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, one thing, one thing. I, I'm not also co host now because I left. Just oh, okay, it's me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
I just click participants and uh, make co-host or host. So, uh, me and Alexander will be talking about DateCom. I can't. Okay, sorry. Uh, so, DateCom is the be DateCom provides the basis for self sovereign internet. Um, uh, it's basically a messaging protocol that enables agents to talk with each other in an interoperable way. It means that used across different uh, different um, different uh, kinds of messaging. Uh, it doesn't. It does not. Uh, it does not have a vendor lock-in kind of system, so it can be used around different uh, different messaging in different messaging requirements so it is built up on top of dids and did documents uh, it's flexible and the main uh, the special part about didcom is that you can build on top of it or uh, uh, different protocols on top of it in order to best suit the user requirement so you can make a specialized a messaging protocols on keeping it as a base and it uses public key cryptography uh, most of the introduction about didcom has been uh, presented already so we'll be focusing on the other properties of didcom today yes architecture so the picture on the left um, shows like uh, the basic of how DITCOM works. So <clears throat> it sits on top of uh, uh, other transports. So for example, it's it, it is transport agnostic, so it can work on top of um, HTTPS, HTTP, um, Bluetooth, NFC, or any other um, transport players. Uh, as a basis uh, and didcom is like the um, uh, works on or is based on the basic messaging protocol that allows uh, agents uh, to communicate with each other based on the deeds so it can also have other protocols on top of it for example, for uh, exchanging credentials, uh, presenting proofs, and establishing connection or uh, yeah, or uh, um, routing and so on. And on the uh, right, uh, we see how it can be used. There are different entities or persons. Uh, named Carl, Bob, Alice, and I can use their pair dids to communicate securely with each other. Mm. So this just shows uh, how pair-to-pair -pair communication can work without routing. And the um, green arrows is the didcom message, just that is uh, transferred between the entities. Yeah, uh, before uh, to establish a connection, um, uh, the entities first have to know the did keys uh, for the other party. Uh, 
to encrypt and decrypt messages and for the communication to be secure. <laughs> so uh, for security, uh, did come um, uh, messages can uh, be encrypted. It can include signature. It can be non-repudiant or not, uh, or repudiant. Um, so integrity of data is achieved uh, with message uh, encryption uh, or signing it. Um, so uh, it also has something called authenticated. So the um, recipient can't prove the sender. Uh, and it uh, focus on privacy. So it is kind of flexible for the sender or the recipient, uh, what they choose to include. Mm, and we will talk about storage and routing in the next slides. So a DITCOM message is, um, comes in three types. So it's the DITCOM plain text message, which is not encrypted and do not provide any integrity. So it's just a plain, yeah. It's based on the text message can be assigned, then it is a DITCOM sign message, which is based on a JSON web signature. So the, the message is then included as a payload of the JVS. Um, and it can be encrypted. And then it's a um, DITCOM encrypted message, which is uh, based on uh, JSON web encryption. So on the feature is, or on the, in the <coughs> diagram here, we see that it has the plain text as an inner in the envelope, and then it can have a, a wrapped in another envelope. Um, and another one, uh, if it wants to be encrypted. So uh, any of this is optional, except the plain text, uh, yeah. So the uh, algorithms that are used, it's uh, defined by uh, JSON web algorithms, uh, but DITCOM only support a subset of these due to interoperability purposes. So these are the algorithms uh, used. They have support for a few few types, so XD20P. Uh, I won't name the, them all, but they have different purposes. For example, uh, some of them provides anonymous uh, uh, encryption and uh, another, or the other provides uh, authenticated encryption, depending on the use case. And other, and also, different key wrapping algorithms are supported. Um, so, uh, as seen in the list here. So it's easy. H E S for anonymous encryption. And it, yeah, it's based on different type of curves, like uh, Defi Hillman. Yeah. And for signing, it's also a support for different algorithms seen in the list there. So encrypted messages are reputable. Uh, if non reputation is required for a particular protocol message, the message must be signed before encryption, but it isn't necessary to sign it to prove uh, 
the sender because it has also it can be authenticated encryption as well so instead so. so for data privacy it's uh, it's supported by encryption and it has peer-to-peer -peer connection it's transport agnostic it can be for example used over bluetooth which isn't dependent on a central server uh, for confidentiality it it is encryption mm -hmm. and anonymity uh, it, uh, third parties can learn who's communicating about what and when so that's one of the properties The sender can be anonymous to the recipient. For example, uh, uh, routing can be used. Um, it did come, uh, the messages, uh, it's flexible and it, the messages can be stored anywhere. It can be stored in a database, uh, files in a QR code, cloud, or private storage and edge devices. The, the a very common uh, discussion that uh, we've seen is if we can store it in a cloud, it will again uh, make it a little centralized. But but Didcom gives a flexibility to flexibility to uh, change your cloud vendor. So that way. So. Uh, this is how a routing is done. Uh, routing protocol uh, called routing protocol version two, also uh, identified by PIURI. Uh, as shown here, this is the routing protocol. And it is a one way protocol where the sender, uh, uh, sender encrypts the message and puts it inside a envelope, which is uh, the forward Oh, okay, so there are three roles in this protocol. The sender emits messages of type forward to the mediator. The mediator unpacks the payload of the encrypted forward message and passes on the result to the recipient. Uh, it's one way uh, communication. Uh, it's one way communication, but it, uh, and there is no return protocol for this at all. Uh, if in, it has to return the, uh, they can create a new um, forward protocol and that's how it works. Or it may not have any return request at all in some cases. Uh, so A encrypts, uh, so A has to send a message to C. So A encrypts from A to B. So this is M0 is message and uh, so, it, att it attaches a forward, uh, forward, forward, forward message, and uh, it sends it to. So basically, it goes through a mediator. Yeah, and yeah, that's how it works. Maybe you can explain it better. Uh, yeah, there can be multiple mediators. That's the in the routing protocol um, and it's kind of flexible in, in how the routing is done as well depending on the implementer so yeah because uh, the commissar specification is it provides doesn't explain uh, too much on how it is working mm -hmm. so it yeah, mainly focus on uh, what, but can be wrapped in multiple forward messages if uh, if there are multiple there are mediators. Multiple. Yeah, and one mediator uh, doesn't care about if the other recipient is a mediator or a recipient. So that means. Yeah, so that's basically it. So in terms of. In terms of security, did come 
yeah so the uses these properties and in privacy it also uses encryption stories can be done anywhere and routing is very flexible in didcom thank you yeah thank you for presentation thank you, uh, thank you for presentation so the question is like so what's the main difference between Tipcom and TLS protocol in your opinion? So I mean you you covered some stuff, but can you explicitly say? Mm -hmm. So Tipcom is decentralized it and the keys is also stored privately. It's stored on a centralized server. Um, it's also it's flexible, it isn't dependent on one particular application or one case can be. Uh, and other protocols can, because it is a messaging protocol, uh, other protocols can be built on top. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. for diagnostic. That's right. That's I right. mean, uh, you are right uh, in terms of decentralization, uh, but uh, from a uh, perspective uh, like storing uh, private keys at like locally, you mean, I mean, in case of TLS, also, also if you consider a server as a key, it's also the same way like yeah. server stores yeah. its own key, um, user stores its own key, but the main but difference, difference like uh, TLS uses uh, public key encryption infrastructure. So when establishing a connection, it relies on certificate authorities. Uh, mm -hmm. to validate mm -hmm. all the issues and uh, not service uh, public, public. But in case of mm -hmm. Dicom, it doesn't rely on that. So it yeah. uses uh, blockchain or some distributed networks, networks to validate the issues. issues. Uh, it's the peer issues, care, uh, uh, public key. Yeah. So it's, yeah. because of that, it's because decentralized. That decentralized. And second thing and you mentioned is like it's, like it's a one way, uh, one way routing. So it's asynchronous. So it just sends a message. It's like it's email. Like email. So it sends so message and message you can uh, wait. wait. Uh, but uh, in case of TLS, it's TLS, mostly, uh, for, example, example, for example, it's a handshake, handshake every time, time. back and forth. Back and forth. Yeah, so yeah, it's, so it's, it's uh, something. So the, so the, the second uh, difference uh, is in terms of maybe routing. I think it did come also, but uh, you can look up the DIT document and then send them. Message yeah. without yeah. handshake, if you want, for example. Oh, yeah, yeah. And also, and as you said, like it doesn't wait. Uh, uh, Back message. back message so you so as the other can send it later maybe yeah. uh, if yeah. he wishes uh, mm -hmm. and decentralization, decentralization is the main difference as you mentioned great Wait. thank you for thank presentation, you for presentation. Uh, yeah. now we can go to the next um, yeah, the, the, the two are left they are quite like similar maybe in terms of application you want to go So we have looked at WhatsApp as our case study, and we have tried to kind of explain the art. It was more challenging than we expected, but there, there's no better time to talk about WhatsApp than now after the issues that they had recently. So 
uh, me and Ben kind of did a um, superficial uh, research on it because uh, diving too deep on it uh, would be time consuming for, and uh, we had a limit of five to 10 minutes to talk about it uh, to begin with. So we didn't want to dive too, too deep into it. So WhatsApp uh, provides uh, three main services. It's messaging, voice calls and video calls. Uh, we are going to focus more on the messaging part because it's a bit more interesting and that's where we found most of the information from. Um, so talking about the WhatsApp architecture um, and assuming that this image is 100% uh, accurate because uh, most of the data that we found were from 2018, 2019 and not very recent in terms of architecture. So a lot of stuff might have changed, uh, but based on what the white papers say, this is kind of the most representative uh, architecture. Uh, so from the image, we can see that they use quite a lot of protocols in terms of just uh, transporting uh, the messages. Um, it, it was kind of shocking for us to see that they actually use a local database. I was under the impression that everything is stored into the uh, central database and then messages are fed like HTTP requests, but it seems like every third party storages like iCloud and uh, Google accounts. Um, it was surprising to see that they don't use just HTTP, uh, but they use XMPP uh, for their messaging protocol. XMPP is just an extensible messaging and uh, presence protocol. It's built on top of XML and it basically just uh, streams XML um, data from uh, one end to the other end. Um, nothing here is technically peer-to-peer -peer, uh, compared to uh, the other protocols. Um, it's a client-server protocol, so all the messages go through a me mediator in this case as well. Uh, what makes XMPP a, a better alternative to HTTP is uh, that it can uh, not only pass the message, but it can also contain some metadata about the uh, presence of the user. For example, you can tell if the uh, receiver is actually The first case is when uh, the two uh, users at the end of the messaging are actually online and can receive and send messages. In this case, uh, the message goes through the mediator, but uh, nothing is stored in the database. It's just sent directly uh, from the server to the other user. But in cases where one of, uh, one of the end users is not online, then it has to be stored uh, temporarily on the database and then later fed as a HTTP request once the other uh, end user goes online. Um, so after the messages are received, they are get deleted by uh, on the main database and they are stored locally into the SQL uh, application. Uh, there are other um, more complex uh, servers that are used in these case. They, um, it was surprising because uh, they were claiming that they don't store any um, data regarding the messages, but on the other hand, they have like three the different DBMS uh, systems that are working concurrently. So we are not entirely sure what is stored uh, exactly into these uh, uh, databases, but uh, they claim that they can only store uh, metadata about uh, the users and the messages. Um, if I will can proceed, uh, we have checked, uh, looked at the security aspect and uh, of course, WhatsApp uh, made a big debut with their end-to-end -end encryption feature, uh, which was established quite early, but they kind of didn't enforce it into the messages. But uh, now there's no way of escaping it. All the messages sent uh, on WhatsApp are actually fully encrypted end-to-end. -end. Um, this, uh, we have a bit of a redundancy in the information we have given here, but I am just going to touch it here. And then on the next slide, I'm going to go a bit uh, uh, deep on the encryption part. Um, so what they claim to do is that they uh, sign, uh, they encrypt the messages and then they sign the keys that uh, are used to encrypt these messages. And uh, for as long as these uh, messages stay in the database, they will keep the keys. But once they are sent to the user, then these keys will be deleted. Um, a downside of this is that uh, there's no way of proving authorship once the key is deleted because there's uh, uh, no central authority that can check if the same key has been used and then if the same key was received uh, by the receiver. Uh, 
different policies for one-to-one -one messaging and group messaging. Example in group messaging, uh, uh, plausible deniability doesn't hold up. Um, each sender, uh, each sender's uh, message is signed and the keys are stored, so uh, messages can be actually checked and uh, seen if the signatures match. But on the other hand, if it's a one-to-one -one, uh, type of messaging, then these keys are not actually stored, so there's no way of checking if uh, there's no way of saying that uh, uh, a sender was the actual person who sent uh, these data. On the other hand, um, they don't claim any type of data integrity, uh, and which is kind of logical because they claim that they don't uh, keep these data into uh, their servers. Um, so what they can uh, claim is that they send the data they've received, and uh, that's about it. But they can't uh, claim that these data has this uh, data has not been um, modified on the way. Um, Despite all the security features that they've implemented, there have been data leaks. Uh, the uh, most intriguing one uh, that happened quite recently was uh, done by using a, uh, a, a um, it was specifically designed, but there was basically just a single image that was uh, specifically made to do this. The image was curated by uh, a hacker and then sent to, uh, a user and then if this user were to kind of put a original uh, send of the image will actually get a lot of metadata uh, about the uh, other uh, end user. Um, I am not entirely sure how that attack uh, worked, but that goes to show that uh, WhatsApp actually uh, um, sends back and forth a lot of metadata, even though they are claiming not to do it most of the time. Um, but that kind of aligns with the new uh, terms and services, uh, which uh, say that they now will start sharing quite a lot of metadata to uh, the parent company, uh, Facebook. And But we are not sure to what extent those metadata actually go. Um, in this one, I'm going to talk a bit uh, uh, deeper into the end-to-end -end encryption. Um, alongside with the routing and uh, the other protocols. So uh, uh, message uh, transport protocol. Um, there are three uh, main keys that are uh, used to initiate and uh, are actually created at the uh, time of installing and creating a new uh, account uh, in uh, What's up? Uh, so the three keys are the identity keys. Uh, just a disclaimer, these are all uh, pairs of keys. So they have a public and a private uh, uh, pair. Uh, so the identity key pairs, the signed pre-key uh, pairs, and one-time pre-keys. Uh, the, all of these three keys are actually created at the time of installation. Uh, but the one-time pre-keys are actually created uh, every single time they run, run out. So it's basically a set of keys. And then if the user runs out of them, then they are recreated. Um, the identity key is the first one to be created. And uh, then this one is used to sign the pre-keys. And uh, the one-time pre-keys are created in a similar fashion, but they just have different values from the identity and the signed pre-keys. Um, so once uh, a user is created, the public parts of these keys are sent to the uh, central server, and then the central server can uh, basically feed these keys to uh, a potential sender. So if we are about to initiate a chat, then um, uh, I will request the public keys of uh, the other receiver, uh, and then we can actually start um, a uh, what's so called a mess, uh, message key. Uh, it's a, a, a AES uh, synchronous key, um, symmetry key. And uh, that one is created for each message that is sent. It uses the uh, one-time pre keys to generate the uh, AES key. And then um, it's used, it's basically created every single time one of the uh, uh, partakes on the chat sends a message. Um, Despite, uh, uh, besides end-to-end uh, -end encryption, um, there aren't uh, any anonymity features uh, in terms of uh, if uh, WhatsApp themselves know who is sending the messages, they actually know you need to sign, uh, sign up your account.
it's up to identify you. So these uh, data are actually part of the metadata system. So they kind of can profile you even if they weren't able to store these um, somewhere in the cloud. Um, storage, uh, I mentioned it on the uh, schema uh, before. So there are two types of storage. It's uh, the local one, which is the most prominent one. It's fully encrypted. And in theory, only you should be able to see those data and the person who you send it to. Um, they have the cloud storage, uh, which I kind of explained that we are not entirely sure what they store there. Uh, and that is encrypted as well, and we have to take the word for it. And uh, about the routing part, uh, they use the signal protocol, as I mentioned. Um, this one is also a um, client server type of protocol. Um, it was built as a uh, it was built just to as a alternative to the existing uh, HTTP and the XML alternatives. Uh, it was later called Signal, and uh, it was initially used, I think, to 2013 in a messaging app, which now it's called Signal, and it's still uh, ongoing. And um, uh, the, the thing about Signal is that they provide all uh, the uh, security requirements, such as uh, integrity, uh, confidentiality, and then uh, all of the rest. But uh, the thing is that they are quite open and flexible in terms of how third parties implement the protocol. So um, that's this protocol to the logging and maybe store uh, other data. Uh, rather than uh, going with the full on set of the requirements that Signal uh, implements. Um, so in, in case of WhatsApp, Signal is uh, there, but uh, they kind of have power onto what they will use from the features that, that they provide. And um, since it's a closed uh, system, um, there isn't much to uh, research about. Uh, we have found one white paper shared by WhatsApp themselves, so and they don't disclose all of the, the details. So this is how deep we could uh, get into this week of time. Yeah, yeah, we have to trust them. Yeah, thank you. I understand like it's a uh, closed source, so it's quite hard to uh, find information compared to TLS and Bitcom. Uh, so, so the question is, the question is uh, you uh, all uh, uh, learned that there was a uh, shutdown of WhatsApp, Facebook, and everything uh, this week. So yeah. do you know do you what know was the reason? Was the reason? Um, I, just, I just know some people were supposed to solve that, could not get <laughs> in access inside the building. Yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it was all closed, so that it took them more than it should have yeah. otherwise. Yeah, so yeah, they so couldn't they verify their, their identities, identities to get, to get into, into this administrator room to, room to uh, solve the issue quicker. Issue quicker. So, the so the problem was this identity, identity system was also centralized. centralized. So it so broke it down, down with all, with like, all like, crashed with everything. Crashed so, with everything. <laughs> so it like, so it, like uh, it shows a single point of failure. And the second thing, which was I was wondering is like, I was okay, there is like just Facebook drops. If just Facebook just crashed, Facebook crashed but, but it crashed, crashed. everything was crashed. Facebook, Facebook and it's Instagram, Instagram, WhatsApp, and yeah. their VR, VR application VR also crashed. crashed. So, so it means that, that yeah, yeah, it means it that means everything that is everything quite connected. connected. I mean, I mean uh, and there is one uh, single uh, point of failure, so which is really uh, a sad, sad thing. thing. Uh, uh, and shows, and shows how, centralization how centralization is so bad and can have such bad consequences for us. And, and I believe, I believe like, like even, even it, it, it was shut down for like 12 hours. hours. Uh, some, uh, people, some people uh, do, uh, business do business in this uh, social media. So yeah. it was maybe uh, quite, quite important for them, for them. Like, yeah. because, because they lose they a lot of them. money for one day if you don't work. Yeah. So uh, it, it was a bit weird because uh, a lot of people were speculating that they had DNS issues as well. Yeah, and yeah. that was kind of the case because if you try to ping the IPs or anything, nothing would be returned back. So mm -hmm. maybe it was just a configuration, but it might have been an attack as yeah, well. Yeah, I read uh, an article that it was a DNS, DNS problem, problem actually. Yeah. So due to DNS, due to DNS problem, problem uh, uh, system shut down. Shut down. And yeah, uh, this uh, ID system was just to solve that issue, issue, but they couldn't make it. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah so, so I mean, uh, uh, and also, and also one thing is like when, when such big system, big system uh, experience some problems, some problems, it also it affects other networks. networks. So, so, for example, for example Norway, Norway might have some problem with internet connection, or I mean, it was global issue, yeah. So, uh, which is, uh, which is, yeah. yeah. And because and of that, we need some sort of identity system systems system which, which doesn't rely on DNS, on DNS or like, or like uh, these uh, centralized, centralized servers. servers. So at least, so at we, least can, we can, um, uh, yeah, we can yeah, solve, we can solve such issues, issues quickly, quickly or like or we like don't we experience don't such issues. But it, it was uh, kind of interesting to see that a company such as Facebook, which they have, they have quite a lot of, you know, um, Research, research and resources and everything and they still kind of base their authentication systems into the main central sort of uh, governance uh, we think that at least for the facilities and something they would have something separate from the main sort of service and uh, governance system but it seems like everything was in basically centralized in so every thing that they provide is completely, completely centralized, centralized because i mean i was just saying like maybe if Facebook uh, doesn't work, I mean, other applications which are like quite different, quite distributed. Yeah, because it yeah. got them, so I thought like they were different yeah, But uh, imagine this case scenario, for example, INSEA goes down, we don't expect that the doors of the campus wouldn't work, even if INSEA went down. But for them, it seems like everything is centralized completely. <laughs> Yeah, it could be an attack like by someone to like for example for DNS, they could attack it to shut down, I mean to crash the Facebook service. Uh because there was an interview before that. So they want to uh, show the world that there is interview. And yeah. inter uh, so, uh, so uh, it's like a marketing, like a maybe, marketing. in a sense, but uh, we don't know. Yeah, we don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah good. Yeah, thank thank you, for you for presentation. It was quite, it was quite interesting. interesting. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, now we now should we should move to the, move the next, next last presentation. presentation. Um, hello. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sure. Okay, sure. Uh, Dipesh, uh, Dipesh, you can. You can okay. okay. Yeah, I will share my screen. Um, yeah, yeah. You can. Uh, you can have you can come, have here come here and present. and present. Yeah, you can see my screen. So right? You can. Uh, you can uh, just mute it for now. Uh, can you see my screen? Can you talk? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, great. Uh, uh, you can see my screen? Hello. Yes, we can. Uh... Yes. OK, yeah. Um, um, me and Eric will be presenting about Signal. So starting with the architecture. Um, yeah, it's, it's one of the images uh, we found on the internet. So. Yeah, basically it uh, has a lot of components going on into it, but uh, most of the things are uh, optional in the sense that it uh, it provides, uh, it actually tries, tries to compete with the, the big messaging apps like uh, WhatsApp or Telegram, but also uh, keeps in mind the, the privacy and security. The user side, which is uh, the, App, they also have a desktop uh, application these days, but uh, usually apps are the most used ones. So the, the green ones are the encrypted messages uh, going on. So th these are the text uh, messages and 
files are the ones uh, th that are shared during those uh, conversations, as well as uh, it uses uh, some features of uh, cloud. Uh, uh, and in, uh, as you can see, it has uh, Amazon S3, as well as uh, Google Cloud Messaging for the Android uh, notification and uh, Apple push notification service for the uh, for sending uh, push notifications to uh, iOS devices. And it's uh, um, like Postgres and Redis. So these are uh, databases that the uh, uh, signal uh, did, uh, signal server uses in in, uh, in their main server. So when whenever a message arrive uh, is is sent to it uh, it goes through to the uh, on premise server first. So this is uh, required just to make sure the uh, it it goes it's routed properly. So in case uh, it's not sent, uh, it has to stay there for. Uh, sometime in case there's no internet connectivity available in the receiver. But uh, the difference that uh, uh, we found is that uh, we the difference between Signal and WhatsApp in this case, it's it's like uh, when the message gets sent, uh, it gets deleted instantly from, from these databases. But in WhatsApp, uh, some numbers, uh, some articles suggest that it might remain up to uh, 30 minutes or something, or I, I'm not sure about the number, but it's not instantly. So uh, there's also the Torn and uh, Stone um, protocols. These are the web RTC protocols used for peer-to-peer -peer communication. Uh, this is uh, used for the uh, voice and video calls that uh, that is provided uh, with the uh, signal apps. So everything is end-to-end -end encrypted. Uh, and uh, I'll talk about those in the in this slide. So uh, talking about security. So yeah, it has, uh, uh, it uses two, uh, the way it generates uh, signatures and, uh, and there is uh, key, uh, key access protocol. Um, so as you can see, it has XED DSA and PXED DSA uh, signature schemes. These are uh, actually uh, a better version of uh, ED DSA. Um, which uh, which are usually not so uh, random or uh, non-deterministic. So uh, as you can see on the right side, uh, a deterministic approach of, of generating signatures could be, let's say uh, two signatures have to be generated, S1 and S2, and R is the non-share, and H1, H1 is the hash values, uh, and Q is uh, one of the parameters from the elliptic curve. So, after a certain time. So if it's uh, a deterministic way of doing, uh, of generating signatures, uh, the private key can be calculated using such approach. So uh, Signal basically does, uh, what Signal basically does is adds a random value to this calculation so that uh, it's uh, it's impossible to, to uh, derive the private key out of it. And uh, uh, yeah, there's, uh, uh, Defi extended triple Defi Hellman uh, uh, system also uh, in short called X3DH, uh, which is I think also uh, this entire uh, entire architecture is uh, it's open source and uh, also used by WhatsApp as mentioned previously by uh, Besnik. Uh, and uh, uh, this uh, X3DH is used for mutual authentication based on public keys. So. Uh, when when two users are about to communicate, uh, both of them have to agree to to a certain key, and if those keys uh, are the same and they agree to it, uh, then then the uh, uh, encrypted uh, then they can start uh, sending messages using the the end to end encryption, and uh, it also allows for forward secrecy and cryptographic deniability. Forward secrecy uh, is is the feature that. Uh, if we you know uh, know the keys from previous messages or historical messages, you you can't uh, can't guess or or calculate the ones to the always changes the the, the keys in every um, in every session. Uh, 
uh, in fact, in every message that, that is sent. And the cryptographic deniability means that uh, uh, even if you if you can uh, see see the plain text of some message, uh, you you can't certainly say that it's uh, uh, it's the 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 right one. Uh, let's say you're sending a message to someone and uh, encrypted message to someone, and the person gets uh, gets the plain text, but he he can't uh, certainly say that uh, the 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 sender intended to say, send the exact same message. It could be something else. So this feature feature comes handy in in terms of security. Um, Uh, they implement a double ratchet algorithm uh, that uses uh, the tree, the key agreement protocol mentioned in the earlier slide. And it generates a new key for every message, and the new keys can't be calculated from all the ones. That implements a KDF chain, as you can see there. Uh, that starts with a single key, uh, and then a key takes in, uh, taking an output, do the calculation, and then uh, the output is. Uh, the output key to encrypt the message and another KDF key, which takes some of the output from the calculation. And then that repeats uh, until the session is over. And because it includes some of the calculation, they can freely calculate the next key, which makes them kind of independent each message. Uh, as for the central server, they use a central server. Uh, they first send a message through the central server and then it's stored there, stored there and deleted the instance that it's fetched, fetched. And the central server stores the record for all the users and the devices. And uh, go to the next slide. With the storage, as we mentioned, uh, it's a temporary storage and it's deleted when fetched by users. So there's really not much storage going on. They also use, um, if we go back, uh, messages stored locally. Mm, on each device. Uh, also, before, when they're selling files, they use a third party service like Amazon, and uh, the files are then uploaded to Amazon, and then the link is sent back. Next, uh, for routing, uh, it's all handled by the central server, except if it's voice or video calls, which are paid for by default. But if the user doesn't have the address of the of his recipients, then it's forced to go through the central server. Next one. That was it. <laughs> so here we also have to uh, rely on saying on their saying that they will delete it. Right? Yeah. And what's the like uh, can you summarize what's the difference between like WhatsApp and email? Yeah, the main difference is maybe the information they store uh, when they send and information is being sent. The central server is mainly only used for kind of organizing the sessions. It's not really used for storing that much. So I think that might be the main difference. And also no metadata export as like No, they don't really use it. I don't use it for yeah, it's just the phone number is uh, stored in uh, uh, signal, but they, they claim that that's not uh, tied to the user so but in case of whatsapp it, it can be uh, phone number as well as contacts um, as well as add preferences and and many, many other things one more thing that i would add is that signal is also successful in the pods or in you can verify if they are doing what they are saying oh really yeah that's, that's nice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I forgot about the open source part. Yeah, you can actually choose to not trust them and go and do your own inspection if you want. Okay, great. Yeah, thank you for the presentation. Yeah, great. Uh, so we uh, we have learned these four protocols and uh, what you can what I can say is like everyone has end to end encryption. To, it's kind of it's a kind of standard now. Even WhatsApp recently like added it. So, but but still, I think like uh, with adding this end-to-end -end encryption, you can't provide real, I mean, security or stability. So, you, I mean, you should distribute your system, uh, make it a bit decentralized. And the open source thing is also like 
give some guarantees. Yeah, so what I think what we learned is from this comparison. Uh, do you have any ideas after analyzing this for? You can share your thoughts. So who who uses signal? Yeah. I kind of thought of the option of it. Decided to change the terms and services, mm -hmm. and I was already using Telegram, but the open source uh, kind of you know made it more attractive. Yeah. Well, I use Telegram and WhatsApp. Uh, for signal, I didn't use it, but yeah, but it seems to be more reliable than, than the, his like WhatsApp. And I think they got a big batch of new users once WhatsApp started up their engine source, and they kind of got more people interested into helping them build the app as well. So they are implementing quite a lot of features in their initial environment. And they have a lot of privacy just uh, features in the front end app as well. For example, um, you can you can configure to send messages when you actually send your touch ID to know that you're actually willing to send them to the signal. And uh, every time you open the app, you have to scan your touch ID, for example, to be able to receive the messages. So there are quite a lot of features that are not uh, conventionally used in the other. How how is the company profits? I think it's just based on donations. Donations. Yeah. Mm, great. And uh, the thing is that I don't think there's a central company to it, as far as I know. I think they are just decentralized uh, programs and working on it. Mm. As far as I'm, I'm not the college. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For WhatsApp, I mean, they made an update uh, like in in this year or yes. Yeah. Yeah, so you, you receive a uh, notification and you need to read it and agree to it. So it's, it's saying like, we will share some part of information with uh, Facebook. Yeah. So it basically means they are preparing to make uh, to add some other ad advertisement to WhatsApp service. I mean, they they uh, they bought WhatsApp like uh, quite a few years before, but they didn't actually uh, make profits from it still yeah. because they don't, they aren't using anything really much. So they want they of course will do, and they are preparing for that. So uh, yeah, I think yeah. But I th I think it's not only about because I think they are, uh, the business idea is to keep it ad free, but it's to keep Facebook with more ad um, sensitive yeah. data so that they can basically uh, profile you through WhatsApp, but then show you the ads on Facebook. Mm. Okay, well. yeah. so, so they are trying to keep the same user experience, but kind of benefit uh, through other services that they have. Already yeah, probably because if they put ads on WhatsApp, I think probably yeah, just, you know, just move to Telegram or Signal so to its competitors. Yeah, I see. Great. Uh, I will stop. Yeah, yeah.